In a time of confusion and misinformation, Scala Precision brings together the most talented researchers, out-of-the-box thinkers, and passionate visionaries to develop the most advanced cancer treatments today. With more than 1,000 scientific and clinical studies, this groundbreaking research demonstrates that cancer is a metabolic disease, and more importantly, that it can be more effectively managed and prevented when it is recognized as such. Scala Precision Health builds a therapeutic relationship with your oncologist. When you're diagnosed with cancer, always get a second opinion. There are evidence-based options that work directly with chemotherapy and radiation that your oncologist may be unaware of given limitations in the standard of care. Scala Precision Health can educate you and your physician on how to implement hyperbaric oxygen therapy, the ketogenic diet, intermittent fasting, as well as hormonal and nutritional support to maintain muscle and immune function. Chemotherapy and radiation causes many nutritional and hormonal deficiencies. These deficiencies can be corrected to help elevate the patient's immunity and in time, lower the dose of chemo and radiation. Joining me now is the founder and owner of Scala Precision Health, Russ Scala. Russ, thank you for joining us How today. Are you? I'm very good. I'm excited to be with you. I think this is very uh, important information. Now, I, I want to get into this really fascinating story you have, but first, I think it's important for our viewers to have a better understanding of who you are. If you wouldn't mind giving us an overview of, of yourself, Russ. Yeah, I, I basically always been interested in medicine. I started out working in the emergency room in high school, uh, became fascinated with saving lives. From there, I moved into the streets to become a paramedic, attached mm -hmm. to the SWAT team. I did that for about 20 years and um, wanted to go back to graduate school. And uh, the, that, that kinetic environment, a lot of things you can't unsee, I knew that wasn't a healthy envir environment for me. So I went back to uh, Rollins College and uh, focused on my master's program. At the time, I, I started racing around the country as a triathlete as well. Um, that led me to become the director of research for a large pharmacy, Signature Pharmacy, where I set up anti-aging centers from Boca Raton to Beverly Hills. My job was to train the physicians on nutrition and hormonal replacement therapy. And then from there, I opened up Scala Precision Health here in Winter Park. That's sort of the 60,000 foot view, <laughs> you know, yeah. my, my life in a capsule. So needless to say, you are more than qualified to be here today diving into this subject. I, so yeah. we're, great, we're grateful. Yeah, I, I that. think I, you know, you know, my whole life, uh, we've come up with some amazing things. I surround myself with very smart people, mm -hmm. pharmacists, doctors, outside the box thinkers. And I think one of the things that I've always done, I've always asked questions. Like when triathletes were having heart attacks with normal cholesterol in 96, mm -hmm. I was asking cardiologists what happened. Nobody, yeah. nobody could answer me. So I flew to the best cardiovascular research labs in the country and, 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 and I got my answers. So, um, you know, my OCD kicks in when I'm trying to go down the <laughs> rabbit hole and I'm just extremely curious because um, my mother and father went on the hormonal replacement therapy and we slowed down my mom's dementia mm. and almost reversed my dad's diabetes. So, wow. I mean, this is at 70 and regu regular folks don't have this, this information. So what we're doing here is great educational content and it's, it's really the new oil. Right? Absolutely and then just even the subject of cancer in and of itself I mean how many of us sadly have been directly exposed to it and you yourself actually had an experience with not just one but two good friends that were diagnosed with cancer. Can you share that story with us? Mm. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. I know. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, two of my best friends that, uh, you know, that work with me a year ago, they both got diagnosed with cancer at mm -hmm. the same time. Um, again, it was like n n nothing is ever easy. So um, Chrissy had estrogen positive cancer and then Tony had esophageal cancer. Yeah. So what I knew immediately we had to do is we just put up a new cancer protocol on um, on Scala Precision Health with the research that people could download and they actually helped me develop that. So, you know, when you get that call that you have cancer, it's like a, a, a light bulb went off in your face. It's, it's scary. And I was living through that with them, mm -hmm. trying, to, trying to make moves. There's three things I wanted to do with mm -hmm. both the cancers. Study the current treatment protocols from traditional medicine. Um, study the outside-the-box thinkers that are doing advanced therapies in Mexico and outside the United States. Some therapies that aren't approved by the FDA. 
what, what is the healing rate? And I want to look at individual influencers that were told they had six months to live and now they're in remission. So it was those three things that I brought together while designing the treatment protocol, while interviewing oncologists, while taking the, the information to the oncologists. And, and it seems like at the time, nobody was on the same page. Everybody mm -hmm. had a different therapy. Everybody had, like, it was an immune therapy. Everyone so, believed their therapy was best. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that was sort of, uh, like I said, I've been on conference calls with uh, Tony and Chris, with their oncologists. Uh, we took the research, as an example, into one oncologist's office and talked about the high glucose environment feeding cancer. Cancer feeds off of glucose and an amino acid called glutamine. Mm -hmm. So we put the new research into his hands and he said, well, that, that, that's not really proven. We go five miles down the road, meet another oncologist with that second opinion you mentioned, and he was all over it, and he, he, he incorporated you know, the chemotherapy. Now, I'm not saying what we're doing is healing people, but it's, it's information and research that the oncologists may not have because they see 20, 30 people a day. So we're bringing the diet, you know, the hormonal treatment. We're, we, you know, we're bringing the ketogenic diet and fasting to keep the glucose down so it doesn't uh, cause the cancer to metastasize, right? It's information. That's it. At the end of the day, we're, you know, we're sharing information so they could, you know, better treat their clients. And, and that was, uh, you know, going through cancer at the same time with both my buddies was overwhelming. You know, I because there, there was so much information, you know. As to different types of cancer right. that you're trying to treat simultaneously, and you can't just approach it from the perspective of their doctor because these are friends of yours. Right, right. Family, if you will. Right, right. And they were a couple, I understand. Yeah, yeah, they were a couple, Ex you know, exactly. Yeah. And uh, it's funny, we had, you know, we had great, Chrissy um, is in remission, and, and Tony, you know, passed away about... Uh, a month ago mm -hmm. and um, when you're watching somebody you care about slowly deteriorate um, with no answers and everybody mm -hmm. just give him hope and he's hanging on every day he was using a feeding tube and uh, you know nobody nobody came together really with a, a, a program that looked at multiple metabolic systems of his body so we had to do a lot of that on our own Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I think there's, it, there's an interesting aspect of this in that Chrissy did survive her cancer, but Tony unfortunately didn't. And I know there's a bit more going into that. If we could just kind of start with Chrissy for a moment, that uh, estrogen positive cancer, if you will, what is the traditional approach for that? And how did you take a twist on that? To, okay, yeah, great, yeah, great, great question. If uh, if any women out there are listening to this, pay attention, okay? Because this is going this could mean life or death for you to ask the tough questions. So, estrogen positive cancer is when you know a woman's estrogen levels up. Estrogen in the woman's body causes cells to grow. Mm -hmm. All right, estrogen causes cells to grow. So, through testing at the oncologist, we found out she had estrogen positive cancer. So we knew if we brought down her estrogen levels, that would be that very would help helpful. Yeah. So that, that's what they did. We knew if she lost weight, which she lost 30 pounds, that would be very beneficial because if you're overweight, your body's in an inflammatory state that speeds the development of cancer. Yeah. And then while losing weight, she's keeping her blood sugar down. Okay, so what a lot of people don't realize, a cancerous tumor or cancer has a lot of insulin receptors on it. Because cancer is trying to survive. Mm -hmm. It's an immortal serial killer. It's been around since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. It wants to survive. But it's very fragile as well. It's very fragile. And as, Dr., as, as Professor Tom Zeifried says, cancer is a metabolic disease. He's been designing these treatment protocols for the last 10 years. And people are now buying his books. And he's shifting the paradigm in cancer treatment. So we know cancer grows in a high glucose environment. It has insulin receptors on it. Well, what does a ketogenic diet do? It keeps. It's all about the fat. <laughs> it keeps. Yeah. It is the fat. The fat actually mm. starves the cancer. Absolutely. Now, it's not a sweeping generalization. The ketogenic diet, fasting, keeping your insulin levels down, and, and following the blood work and our treatment mm -hmm. protocol, that works in line with chemotherapy and radiation. Absolutely. I do want to make that clear. Yeah. You're not advocating no, that no. against chemotherapy. You're mm -hmm. saying there are ways we can supplement that right. so that we don't have to be as aggressive 
with chemotherapy. Exactly. And all I do at the end of the day is I build a therapeutic relationship with the doctor. Some of the doctors are so busy, understand I'm not shooting down traditional medicine. Sure. I'm not saying our way is the only way, but you know, when, when you look at the people that have went into remission, when you look at the advanced research out there that's already done, that the studies are out there, that it's beneficial to keep the blood sugar yeah. down. It's beneficial to uh, keep your insulin levels down. I mean, wh wh why does cancer have so many insulin receptors mm -hmm. on it? Because we know when your insulin levels go up, it also causes cells to grow. Insulin is a growth hormone. Yeah. So in the future, I see cancer patients wearing a continuous glucose monitor. Mm. They could, they could look on their phone and look at their blood sugar every day after every meal and then adjust their meal as they're shifting into the ketogenic diet. It's going to be amazing feedback and, and, and beneficial, right? Absolutely. And then with, with Chrissy, I do want to talk about that outcome. I know you did share that she's in remission, like wonderful news. But you, with the research you pulled to get together, can you just kind of cover that? Yeah, it was good. You know, she, we, we were, uh, Chrissy did... Uh, <laughs> a thousand dollar consult with an oncologist mm. and that oncologist said get the book estrogen matters remember this folks estrogen matters the book i read the book two times i highlighted everything in it it walks you through all the myths of you know th there's a time people thought estrogen causes cancer hormonal replacement therapy is very beneficial mm. this book actually walks you through the trajectory Okay, there are bioidentical hormones like estradiol, estrone, and estriol in, a, in women, and then there are synthetic estrogens, mm. and this book explains that difference. And they actually stopped cancer in some of the studies in this book by putting women on estrogen. So a point, I'm, I'm not saying the book is going to be able to heal people, but right. it'll... It's ed important information. It'll educate people, they'll have more studies in their hands, and it'll pose questions that they may be able to ask their oncologist or show the studies to their oncologist that, that can assist with their therapy. And here's the deal. Everybody's biochemically unique. Mm -hmm. Okay, you and I are completely different. Mm -hmm. there's, there's usually one cancer treatment program for everybody. Right. Okay, so we need to look at the biochemical individuality of each person, mm -hmm. meet them where they are in their disease. All right, is it stage one, stage two, stage four? What's happening with the feeding tube? Well, you know, are, are they going into muscle wasting? There's a lot of things to consider. Are their estrogen levels really high? How do mm -hmm. we get them down? Well, there's estrogen blockers that could be used to block estrogen. And um, Chrissy went on an estrogen blocker. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So the, you know, the, the third, and she refused chemotherapy and radiation against Amazing. her doctors, which was, Amazing. when she was asking me, what should I do? You know, they're, they're my best friends. I'm like, I'm like, I got all the studies out there. I said, you got, you got to make that decision. Let's make it with your doctors. I said, I'm, I don't want to tell you what to do, but the information out there, it seems promising if we do these five things and do a scan to see if the, the, the cancer metastasized. Mm -hmm. If the cancer stops, then we know we're on the right track. Absolutely. Right? So. Um, and as you shared, it, you know, it did. We had a success story there. But um, on the flip side of that, tragically, as you shared, Tony did not survive his cancer. Right, right. And that was esophageal cancer? Correct? Yeah, yeah, it was esophageal cancer. Um, you know, it started out with a tickle in his throat, and I talk to Tony every day because, you know, we work together, and he, he knows all my clients, and uh, we've known each other for 15 years. Mm. It started out with a tickle in his throat, mm. and then in six months, six months, eight months, he's gone. And, I, and that, I think... You know, I, I would go over and visit him, and I would look at him. I'm like, Jesus, I mean, he's dying. And nobody, you know, these doctors that he's on the phone with and doing conference calls with. Um, What's the hardest part with treating that type of cancer? Well, number one, um, you know, if you want to maintain your immune system, mm -hmm. maintain your muscle mass. Your muscles are a reservoir for vitamins, minerals, amino acids. Mm -hmm. He couldn't eat, so the, the cancer that he... He, uh, the, the radiation he got on his throat killed yeah. the cancer in his throat, but in his feeding tube was a lot of sugar. Okay. And the, the oncologist will tell you, no, you just got to maintain weight, eat ice cream, sugar, cake. The oncologists don't use the ketogenic diet for a variety of reasons. They don't maybe believe in the research that's out there, which mm -hmm. is out there. So Tony's, I, I said, Tony, check your blood sugar. He's squirting this feeding tube. 
He's using, um, he's doing five solutions a day, mm. and he checks his blood sugar. He goes, my blood sugar is 160. I go, bro, your feet, this could be feeding the cancer. So on a call with the doctor, mm. we said, could, can this feeding tube solution that he's using be exacerbating the cancer and causing it to metastasize? Because the cancer was killed in his throat, and then over here, he had a golf ball-sized tumor pop up under his ear mm. while he was on the feeding tube. Again, um, it's a combination of the chemotherapy, which you know, uh, and radiation, that damages DNA and can exacerbate cancer. So, w I found a feeding tube solution that was a ketogenic. I told you a ketogenic feeding tube solution that yes. was designed not by Big Pharma, not by some venture capital group, but a woman that was looking for a keto ketogenic feeding tube solution for her husband, because there was nothing out there, and she's got a thriving business right now. So we got Tony the ketogenic feeding tube solution, but. You know, it was uh, it was just too late because he was he 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 lost all his muscle mass. That what what he was feeding himself with five diet times a day was not, you know, not maintaining him. And um, was immune therapy an option? Yeah, we, we 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 did something called uh, Truvita, an immune therapy. Um, but sometimes, like I said, there's so many different immune cells, or so many different. With that theory, there, 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 there could be a hundred different types of connections in cancer, and maybe you may only be targeting one. Um, yeah, it didn't, you know, the, 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 the immune therapy didn't, you know, it didn't work. Now, were his doctors in agreement that it was the feeding tube that caused the cancer to become, to spread? Some, some of the doctors believed that, some of them agreed with it, and then one doctor, Tony and Chris had as as a uh, as a mentor as a guide. Uh, he was a doctor that specialized in cancer, had cancer himself, had a lot of people in remission. Mm -hmm. You know, he did agree with it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it was basically a team of people, and I was on point trying to pull together all this information and make the right right moves. Um, yeah, yeah, it was. So mm. Here we have. Two different stories, two different types of cancers, one couple under the same roof, and two extremely different outcomes. You know, one, this tragic story with Tony, but, you know, Chrissy surviving it against all odds. What is the takeaway for our audience with this? I, I, think, I think the takeaway is, um, folks, we put all the information on Scala Precision Health. You can mm. go to our cancer uh, program and just download the PDFs and read them, or you could take them into your doctor. I put like 10, 10, 10 questions that you could ask your oncologist that is very helpful. Download it at no cost. Mm -hmm. We have studies about hyperbaric therapy, which, really, which is really interesting. If you shift the body into <clears throat> nutritional ketosis and then go into hyperbaric therapy, that high oxygen can kill the cancer. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Okay, so we've got that study in there. Again, that's not me saying I just put the studies together. So the takeaways are get a second opinion, um, Get your hormonal levels checked. Mm -hmm. um, understand about the ketogenic diet, intermittent fasting. Jason Fung's book called The Cancer Code. We read that. Estrogen matters is important. And folks, I know this is scary, but you, when, you, when you're diagnosed with cancer and you get that phone call, you almost have to go to school on your own metabolism. Mm -hmm. and that's one of the things we could help you with. It is indeed scary, but as you've shared today, it doesn't have to be a death sentence. Right, exactly. Russ, thank you so much for your time being with us. I yeah. want to remind everyone, if you would like more information, you can go to scalaprecisionhealth.com. You can also find plenty of information on YouTube at the Russ Scala channel. Thank you so much, Thank Russ, you. Again. I appreciate it.